So hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Ruins of Aerial Devlog. Um, let me show you what I've been up to lately. Um, the first thing I've been doing here in uh, the sandbox is add at the bottom here the uh, different traits. So starting uh, here you can add, for example, the premonition state, the teleportation state, and the innate state, like that. Um, so you can just uh, start your game with this and uh, make the game act with these uh, specific traits but of course at the time of recording of this video uh, none of these traits uh, are implemented yet so that's for uh, later on so next to that if we go to the map interface uh, let's go to Astalan here um, I've also added a, a greet exchanger and Yande, which is a random name. If you wish to continue, you have to pay 200 gold. So then you have the option to pay the cost to continue and watch the gold here on the top. It's paying 200 gold. So that's an interesting one. So this is the mission type called Passage Cost. You have to pay a cost in order to pass uh, the, to the next uh, point, actually. Um, so that's for that one. And then um, the last thing I'm going to show you what how what's happening here is we need to go back uh, to the um, sandbox here. Uh, go back to the sandbox. Um, let's go and add an extra scroll. I've added this petrified scroll. Let's go with Johan, for example. Let's go with one weak enemy. No, let's do one strong enemy. Like that, we just use the starter deck and let's start the game. So, this petrify uh, scroll, like the name says, allows you to petrify an enemy. Um, let me go to the scrolls, and here we have the petrify scroll. I will just drop it on top of that enemy, and now it's petrified, um, which means that it uh, cannot do anything if we go and end our turn. Enemy turn. Your turn. It does nothing, and it's our turn once again. So uh, that's the petrify uh, scroll. So basically, let's go and show you uh, exactly how that works. And let's start with the um, the island interface here. Go to the uh, sheet here, and um, when we go to uh, build specific map point. Uh, we can see that uh, there is also uh, an, an, a variable called voir calculate cost here, which is set in here when uh, going through the map point. And whenever we have the uh, an action, uh, if there is at least one action for action type passes cost or city cost, we set it variable to one. And whenever it's variable is set to one, we uh, set the context of such a map point the context is uh, one of the instance variables so in this case the constant the context is a uh, a value uh, a number of coins but in other types uh, for example when receiving a gift or for uh, for example this context will be entirely something else not a number but uh, the name of an artifact for example so that's why I'm giving it uh, like a generic name and then we set the description here. We also have this var description. And then we take uh, this description. Uh, in this description, we replace the placeholder uh, percentage goal percentage by the string of that map point. So you saw that um, we start here by setting this description to the mission type description. And then we just basically overwrite it with a find replace. And also if uh, the percentage shine, uh, character percentage shine is in there, we uh, also replace that with a random name. And in order to do so, I've added an extra JSON file uh, here, character names, which is like any number of names. I'll uh, add that, some extra ones here. Uh, where are we? Generic Island. Uh, so I'm replacing that character with a random uh, name, basically. So, um, let me just check. Um, now, um, when we 
click this point we say uh, subtract coins from the, the context coins from the coins here and then we hide the mission details so that's the, the only thing which is going to be happening we know that the context of the map point will be a number of coins in case of a passage cost and we just take that number and then subtract from the coins that's basically what happens um, then for the petrification actually for the petrification uh, let's go to the battle uh, here and uh, you'll see that I've added an extra uh, rock kind of symbol here for petrification um, and I've also gone and go, if you go to the stuff here uh, you can see there's also an extra uh, effect here uh, at uh, essentially two effects petrify one and petrify two uh, but it's because we have uh, effect preview activated here that we can see that um, so um, what happens uh, on creation of that enemy we effectively uh, go and um, do, 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 and create it I was hoping that I would find it here or is petrofile one disable effect we are on created petrofile one disable and petrify to disable so we're going to uh, disable that um, on purpose uh, when creating uh, the enemy actually and then for this petrification scroll let me then go here to the scrolls where are we here here we are the scrolls so this petrification scroll you see it's a scroll type called petrification and uh, it's just targeting an enemy it's playing some kind of spell uh, pretty basic stuff and then we have this uh, use scroll use scroll use scroll let me just uh, find it here use scroll and then we can see that if it is petrification that we call we issue the command cast scroll petrify and this cast scroll petrify uh, function here cast scroll petrify but uh, if I just play the sound, um, well, uh, show the exclamation for petrified will enable the effects here, and we add the petrified to the petrified instance variable of that enemy. That's an instance variable I added to indicate that it has been petrified, of course. And I also created an extra statistic for casting uh, petrification. And the essence here is also we. Uh, stop the enemy animation so it's it's actually standing still basically um, and also um, what I've also done here um, when animating and when the animation is uh, finished animation for damage taking for example and I kind of don't remember where I go over here so uh, here uh, when the enemy bite is not petrified we uh, keep moving up uh, forward and backwards, for example, um, and when it's taking damage, it's not uh, not doing anything. That's actually some, some some changes in the animations here as well. I've also adapted the enemy HUD. So if we go here to the update enemy HUD, we can see that uh, petrified. Then it's we're setting the state for petrified, and set state for petrified is here. Uh, setting this to the icon of petrified very basic stuff just like we did for targeted and fire and stuff like that in other videos um, some extra things though uh, when we're ending the turn so here we have this uh, end turn here and um, what we'll do uh, if the enemies uh, is uh, not petrified then it will take uh, the animation damaged yeah so what we'll do is uh, we need to, to give the damage animation but not if it's petrified um, the same thing for fire uh, animation um, so um, let me see what the is here um, and then this also at the end of the turn 
we need to uh, reduce the petrification. So uh, what happens is if the enema is uh, petrified, uh, then this reduced petrify is also called, and then we subtract one from petrified. So if essentially when uh, the enemy is no longer petrified, then we update the enemy heart, we reset the animation, we disable the petrification, and stuff like that. So um, that's basically how the petrify works. Um, an extra cool uh, addition here uh, to the game. Uh, which uh, adds an extra enemy state, basically. Um, so, basically, that's it. Um, I hope you liked it. As always, please like, please subscribe, and see you next time.